Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, quick video arrangement of Little Sadie for flat peg guitar. Um, there's a lot of different versions of this tune, but this is the one I think is kind of the most traditional. It's the one I'll teach all my students, and I think it's nice to start with something that's very straightforward. Um, I've done different transcriptions of this, and maybe later I'll do some interesting videos on some transcriptions and compare and contrast those, but uh, for now, let's learn it in its most basic form. So I'm going to play through it. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, I'll talk about the form. Then we'll go line by line through the tablature. The tablature will be in the video, but if you'd like a copy of a PDF or you just want to support me or you want a, a copy of the lead sheet for jamming with your friends and getting, having lyrics, that will all be available on my Patreon. So consider checking that out below. Okay. Anyways, we're going to play this. It's in the key of D minor. Uh, and without... Further ado, a one, two, a one, two, three, four. So let's talk quickly about the chords in the form. So uh, we're in the key of D minor. I'm going to, uh, I'll put the chords up here, but I want you to notice that we are, uh, there's some weird stuff about this. First off, it's mostly two bar phrases. So that's how we'll learn it. So this song has a weird harmonic rhythm, which means the chords come at kind of like interesting places. Like normally you have, uh, generally speaking, chords kind of go long, short, short, or like uh, long, quick, quick, or whatever. Like you'll often go like, you know, G, or D minor, C, A, D minor, you know, long notes and then short. This one starts right off D minor and then you're going straight to F. And that throws a lot of people off. So you got to be on your toes. Anyways, let's talk about this uh, two bars at a time. So the first uh, two bars, uh, stand up, oh no, sorry. Uh, when I want nine four to make a little round, right? D, F, F. Now you'll notice a couple different things. Um, you could just play D and you go to this low F. I find it's a big jump from this uh, third string to the sixth string, so I tend to go to D and then go to this F, just a small one. And you can just do that, D, F, F, D. I like to uh, put a, I wanna say vexel bass. Uh, I want a, an alternating bass line here. I'll go D, F, and then I'll move my third finger up to the C to get the F inversion. You could also do that if you wanted to do the D and do F like this. That might be easier. Okay, so an hour, one, nine, four to make a little round. Then we have the C chord. I uh, met little Sadie and I shot her down. That's our second phrase, right? Again, a two bar phrase. Next phrase, pretty simple, starting on the A minor. Went back home, got into bed. Then we have this G chord. Now, this is actually a little bit weird because we're singing. Uh, kind of almost doesn't fit with this chord, but it works in the context of the song. Now here's where this gets tricky and throws a lot of people off. Because you have this phrase, uh, and so far we've done these kind of two bar phrases where you end on beat three, right? Well now one night four to make a little round four, then we start the next phrase. I met little Sadie and I shot her down four. Start the next phrase. Went back home, got in bed. Now this one, we kind of like restart when we end the phrase. So we have uh, a bar and a half of G. Four to four, smokeless, under my And we have D, but as soon as we hit the D, we're back on beat one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So really what we have is either... If you're writing it out, you can either think of it as a, a bar of six, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, D, two, three, four, 
Or you can think of it as a bar and a half. So one, two, three, four, one, two, which is probably a little bit easier. One, two, three, four, one, two, D, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, um, I don't think you need to count this, but it might be something that if you're constantly messing it up, uh, counting can really be helpful for that sort of thing. I think counting is, you know, if, as soon as I mess something up once or twice, I go, okay, I'm going to count it until I know I can feel it. Another thing, and actually what might screw people up the most playing this, is I find they're okay when someone's playing the melody. But um, if there's solos happening, people can often get lost with that. G, two, three, four, one, two, D, two, three, four, one, two. So if you need to count during solos, that might be an easier thing if someone's not really playing that melody. It gets a little bit confusing. Okay. Anyways, let's talk line by line through this uh, tune. So uh, we're in the key of D minor. It's actually, I mean, depending on the way people are playing it, you, you switch between Dorian and, and Aeolian. It's not so much of a modal tune. It's You're kind of playing more to the chords. So playing up and down the scale is not super helpful, but if you know, even a D pen minor pentatonic is probably the best thing to practice. But we're more playing to the chords, so you kind of have to think about the chords as they come. Anyways, starting this up. So, uh, I think for the whole time, except for when I try to do different chord, uh, two notes at a time, first finger, first fret, second finger, second fret, third finger, third fret. Okay, here we go. First two bars. Now here you can play a D minor, you don't have to, but I just wrote it in. Then we have the C chord, so you can actually start by making a bit of a C chord, because you want your middle finger up here. And then... So why not strum an A minor on a break? Uh, now these two bars people play a lot uh, in different ways. Really the melody is... Right? Uh, but we're going to play it trying to hold this A minor. Some people you'll still go... Or they kind of move that third finger. I like to play with my pinky here. Really either or uh, works. So I'm just kind of getting double stops. One thing I will recommend about these two bars here on the A minor is uh, try going down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down. And the reason I recommend that is because if you're going uh, down, 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 it becomes very hard to do that at uh, full speed, like if you're playing really fast. So I recommend with this one, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down. Now we have this little line, the last two bits here, the bar of four and then the bar of two. Then we have a D minor bar, so we just go bum, do, do. hammer on here. I, I don't know what I wrote. So let me try that again. So just this last two bars. See, I kind of stick here and just play uh, in this position. You could also move up and get this with your first finger. Because we don't really need to get anything on the first string, so uh, first fret, so we can be in the second position there. One thing I'll say is often when I'm playing this, I like to get that G sound. And if I'm not playing with anyone, it's hard to get the G. So one thing I'll do is I will get this G note here and do this rake where I'm getting the G and the A. So that's something I think I did. I don't know if I did that when I played it through it, but that's something I'll often do there just to get that G sound if nobody's playing it. Um, so that's that tune. So before I play it at a slow tempo, let's talk about like quick things that you could do. So first off, you can add little pickups or extra notes. So for example, starting that off rather than just, well, how do we get to this note? Well, we could literally just go from one note below in the scale. That helps one, two, three, four. Or maybe we add two notes. One, two, three, four, just chromatic. Three, four. Um, the other thing is, why not add some hammer-ons and pulse offs? Right? I like, I recommend with this flat picking stuff to practice it first, really just getting all the notes picked, because that way you get more confidence in your picking. But once you've, you feel comfortable with it, try throwing hammer-ons and pulse offs all over the place. Maybe that's the sound you want to go for. You're totally uh, able to do that. So try 
uh, once you're comfortable with it, throwing in hammer-ons from open strings on pretty much any note. I'm getting into like scotch snaps. Um, experiment around with that, so, that sort of thing. Hammer-ons, pulls-offs, slide into notes. Um, if you want to get more chromatic things, it's kind of nice to throw these just chromatic passing tones between each. adding and subtracting notes and uh, you know often you'll come up with your own licks that you like and you can vary it up. It's nice to have a couple different ways of playing through something. That said, I'm just going to play through it one time uh, at a slow tempo so you can practice along and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I like this tune quite a bit. Okay, a one, two, a one, two, three, four.